morning students i was waiting for some more students to join in anyhow i feel that most of our students are late risers anyway let me start today's class a brief recap of whatever we discussed in the last class schematic entry can be done either through the direct circuit entry or through very log a or through spice net list but i had told in the last class that we are going to go for a direct circuit entry and spice expansion i had told you simulation program with integrated circuit emphasis for simulation a test circuit along with the symbol of the schematic is required this also i had told that when we have a test circuit we should when we have a main circuit we should test it using a test circuit just like in the hdl lab you had a main code then you had a test bench code in the same manner now please remember that the main code was synthesizable there in hdl lab and the test bench was not synthesizable in the same way in this analog design also we will be preparing layout for the main circuit and not for the test circuit as such the test circuit will have signal sources it will have power supplies for all of that there will not be any layout as such so that way a test circuit along with the symbol of the schematic is required drc lvs and r6 form parts of physical verification process drc stands for design rule check lvs stands for layout versus schematic and rcx stands for rc extraction we will be explaining these things later on when we start the layout design of the given circuit now i will skip all these things i had already discussed all these things about c shell and about the linux commands and creating your own library and attaching it to a technology library called gpdk 180 and i had told you that general process design kit is the full form for this gpdk 180 now i had already asked you what is the meaning of cell and my definition of cell is pre designed and pre characterized library element that is the definition of cell so i had asked you that later on we will be doing file new cell view where we are going to create a cell view where we, we will have this particular screen where there will be grids now in this particular screen we are going to have a schematic entry so here i had stopped in the last class now today let me continue from this particular part you will have to again go back to the schematic entry menu and you have to create cell view from cell view uh, this is how the steps are in cadence virtuoso you have to click on create on pull down menu will come then you have to click on cell view and you have to again create uh, create cell view okay now when you open this you will have a cell view uh, that is for the okay uh, that is for something else let me come back to that later and uh, we had told you that if the x axis is time and y axis is output you will see a waveform and that analysis is called transient analysis if x axis is input and if y axis is output then it is that is called dc analysis that is called transfer characteristics and if x axis is frequency y axis is output then you are going to see the bandwidth on the screen that is called ac analysis i think i did not tell this in your lab i told it in the other batch anyway now i am telling you ade stands for analog design environment this is one environment in virtuoso just like you had ise in hdl ise stands for integrated simulation environment similarly here we have ade analog design environment in this ade uh we are going to actually use the spice model of the devices and then we are going to have a simulation for the simulation within virtuoso we have one more tool called specter s p e c t r e just like uh, you had used p spice in the third semester similarly here one tool called specter is uh, integrated with the virtuoso virtuoso is part of cadence package the name specter is given by cadence 
otherwise it is basically spice simulation itself so in this spice simulation we have basically three analysis i have told you if x axis is time then when we plot the output then we are going to see the waveform on the screen and that method is called transient analysis now if x axis is input and if we plot the output in the y axis then we have a input to output transfer curve that is called transfer characteristics and uh, here we call it as dc analysis and if x axis is frequency and if we plot the output in y axis we will plot the uh, voltage gain in decibels then we will be seeing the bandwidth curve or frequency response curve uh, on the screen that is called ac analysis uh, you have already done this ac analysis in the uh, aec lab where you had worked with the rc coupled amplifier and you had plotted the gain uh, frequency versus gain curve there and you had measured the bandwidth it is the same thing here only thing is it is here called as ac analysis because it is with respect to frequency but in this lab you are going to do this dc analysis exclusively which you have not done earlier in any labs but transient analysis is nothing but you observing the uh, waveform on the oscilloscope you have already done it in the aec lab where you have seen the uh, waveform using the oscilloscope there x axis was time itself so that itself is transient analysis so you are already familiar with the transient analysis and ac analysis only dc analysis new for you but i hope in the theory class already the inverters uh, transfer curve is covered where you already know that the transfer curve of inverter contain five regions called a b c d e initially p mos is on later on n mos is on all these things are already covered in the theory syllabus so that is what you are going to plot again in the experiment that is called dc analysis after the circuit verification we can uh, perform the layout design for the given schematic using one more tool called layout excel now there are some abbreviations ade stands for analog design environment as i have told you and av is actually ashura verification drc stands for design rule check i am going to explain later on about this in detail elw stands for error layer window this is in the layout lsw stands for layer selection window that is again in the layout and drc gpdk lvs r6 i have already told vlw is view layer window in the layout you don't have to remember this elw lsw vlw all, the, all that because uh, that is not much of importance there anyhow you are going to work with the layout but you will have to remember drc lvs and rcx you will also have to remember ade now the cadence tools used are virtuoso schematic editor in the beginning then the virtuoso adc for analysis and ade for analysis and plots spectra for circuit simulation virtuoso layout suit and then in the virtuoso layout suit we have one more tool called ashura that ashura is going to you to be used for verification of the layout that is where we are using drc lvs and rc that means within virtuoso you will find uh, one two three four tools within virtuoso itself you will find a schematic editor you will find specter you will find layout suit you will find ashura this whole thing is part of the analog design package in between if you have any questions you can always unmute and ask me any questions till now no sir no okay let me proceed we will start with experiment number 1 i'll skip all these things now once you come into the schematic window simply press i i for instance we are all uh, engineers we are technical people the wordings which we use will have a different meaning in our domain some of the wordings which we use others may not understand at all 
For example, when we say simulation, simulation basically means verifying the functionality of the circuit without having the actual devices. That is the meaning of simulation. Now, if the same simulation, if a non-technical person uses, the meaning can be different. Same way, here when you come into the virtuoso schematic editor, this black screen is the schematic editor. There you press I on the keyboard, that I stands for instance. We are actually going very slow in the beginning in this particular lab because it takes a certain amount of time to grasp and understand these things. These are slightly high level things. So, if I am too much slow, you can ask me to become slightly faster. Or if I am too much fast, you can always interrupt me and you can ask me the questions. Otherwise, I will go in this particular pace only as of now. So, in the schematic editor window, for the addition of instances, press I. I stands for instance. Instance means, we already know that in the library, we have the cells. Cell is a pre-designed and pre-characterized library element. That means, when you select a resistor from library, you will get only the resistor symbol on the screen. But the resistor is a pre-designed and pre-characterized library element. It is completely modeled in the library. Similarly, capacitor. Similarly, inductor. Similarly, PMOS. Similarly, NMOS. When you pick up one PMOS FET, PMOS FET for a 180 nanometer technology is completely designed and characterized. Which means, when you press this I, that PMOS fit is now an instance, resistor is now an instance, capacitor is now an instance, which means all these uh, cells are picked up by us for the schematic entry as instances. You will get only the symbol. Now that is called a instance. Remember these wordings. When you press I, I stands for instance. Instance doesn't mean the regular uh, philosophical word instance. In general, in the English language, we say instantly. Instantly, instance means it, it, uh, it actually means at that particular moment, immediately, something like that. But here, the word instance does not mean that. Here, the word instance means we are picking up a component from the library. That is why press I. I for instance. Now, this will open the add instance window. In that window, browse for library GPDK 180, select the cell PMOS and then select the view symbol. I will sl slightly zoom the screen. I will show you. Okay. So, when you press I on the screen, you can see this library browser add instance. When you press I in your keyboard, immediately this window will open up. When this window opens up, you can see there are so many libraries. There is analog experiments designed to solutions, Ambit, Analog Lib, AVTech, Basic, and again, Demo, GPT-180, IEEE, NC Internal. There are so many libraries. Some are system libraries. We don't have to touch any of those libraries. We are going to use only those libraries which we uh, create for our purpose. And uh, later on the technology library. The technology library is GPDK 180. General Process Design Kit or Generic Process Design Kit 180 nanometer. Now in this library, you will have to select this PMOS. Again in GPDK 180, you can see NMOS 3, NMOS 3 HV, NMOS CAP, NMOS CAP 3, NPN, that is BJT. Then you have PMOS 3. Again you have PNP, that is BJT. You will have so many such uh, devices. Okay, that is actually called cell. You can see here, library, cell, view. Now, remember, in the GPD community library, we are going to select only this PMOS and NMOS for today's experiment. PMOS fit and NMOS fit for today's experiment. That is the cell. Now, the cell will have these many views. You can see ADS, AUCDL, AULVS, Spectre, Symbol. Now, you don't have to worry about all other views. 
As I told you, Cadence is an industry standard tool which is worth 1 crore rupees. So that way, whatever is the industry's uh, requirement, everything is available in Cadence tool. But in our lab, we are not going to go deeper into the tool as such because this is like learning how to oh, drive an aeroplane. Usage of Cadence is like learning how to drive an aeroplane. This tool is really a very vast tool with the two distinct separations like uh, digital design and analog design. And even in the digital design, we can go very deeply into the design aspects. Even in the analog design also, we can go very deeply into the design aspects. So, learning bicycle is easy. Learning bike is also easy. Bike driving, car driving are also easy. But uh, bus driving and truck driving are slightly difficult. Helicopter driving or train driving is still more difficult. Now, aeroplane driving is most difficult. Let us now talk about spaceship now. Okay. <laughs> so, why I told you this is uh, learning about Cadence tool is as if you will start learning about how to run a helicopter or how to run an aeroplane. You will have too many controls in the helicopter panel or in the aeroplane panel. You will have to gradually understand everything one by one. That is why right now we are teaching you only the very basics. That is enough for this particular lab. Later on, if your people are interested in uh, taking up the project work, then uh, gradually you can pick up more interest in the VLSA designs and you can actually do many projects also in the VLSA lab in this semester as well as next semester if you like this particular lab. And we will be able to help you whenever you want our help in uh, executing such projects. Anyhow, today's session also I am recording and gradually the recorded session I will be sharing in the Google class. So let me come back from the library, select GPTK 180, select PMOS and select symbol because we want to see the PMOS symbol on our screen. That is the idea. Now when you select this, you can see library, cell, view. That is what it was asking you, cell view, cell view. That way it was asking you. This is the reason. Now, let me go back to the main screen. Now, you can see here below, when PMOS is selected, you can see, I think you can see this now. When PMOS is selected, automatically you will get one more screen below. I will show you this screen now. So, you will get this screen below. I will zoom it now. See, add instance. When you select, see, GPDK 180, PMOS symbol. Now, you have selected a particular instance. Now, the tool is asking you whether you want to add this instance onto the editor screen. Now, you can see here, this is a PMOS instance uh, characteristics. You can see model name PMOS 1. Multiplier 1, you don't have to worry about this multiplier. Length is 180NM. Please remember this, 180N space capital M. Whenever you change later on in the lab, you will have to be very careful about these uh, notations or these methodologies. Whenever you give a length separately or a width separately, you should not join this N and M. You should simply put 180 N and press enter that M will be taken automatically. Meter will be taken automatically. This N is a nano that is a multiplier. Which means the tool knows the units for every dimension or everything as such. You don't have to give meter or ohms or farads anywhere. The tool will automatically take it. That is why it is putting a space there. So length means what? channel length. The distance between source and drain is called channel length. Width is mons, width is the uh, polysilicon's dimension. Let me draw a small uh, device here. 
let me use my right hand i was using the left hand till now because during this pandemic due to the continuous usage of mouse my right hand started paining so the lower one is substrate right i think that a theory teacher would have explained this to you i am again revising that we have a silicon substrate generally substrate is of p type the reason why the substrate is of p type is if at all we have a n mosfet let us say we have n and n this is drain and source let us say this is now drain and source and we have silicon dioxide here that is the gate oxide above which we will have polysilicon now now above which we have polysilicon now this gate oxide polysilicon can extend like this okay and even the device this can extend like this the source sorry the source can extend like this and the device can be like this the source and drain can extend like this and totally the device can be like this now this is a three dimensional view of mosfet this is n type source n type drain below there is p type substrate then there is this gate oxide that is silicon dioxide above which there is this polysilicon now this is polysilicon okay now you have this side the source and this side drain now we can take the connections in this manner okay now this is source this is gate this is drain i am writing a very crude figure just i am optimizing my own resources because i have opened up the lab manual here i am directly trying to write one uh, three dimensional model of the p mosfet now can anyone answer me that why the substrate has to be p type why the substrate uh, cannot be a pure silicon can anyone unmute and answer lab is supposed to be always interactive can anyone answer why the substrate is supposed to be only p type why it cannot be pure silicon semiconductor if you don't know you honestly tell me that you don't know i'll explain don't worry don't hesitate students will neither say no nor say don't know maunam sammati lakshanam va maunam kalaham nasti va ha so we don't know oh fine honestly you say don't know fine then i'll tell you but sir uh, yeah. is it because we want to reverse bias the junction we want to create a junction there actually we don't want to create a junction because we don't want a bjt here right we want a mosfet mosfet is a field effect transistor bjt is a junction transistor bipolar junction transistor in mosfet we don't want junction so actually that is not the answer i'll tell you the answer you are partly right the pn junction gets in advantageously formed there but my question is something different uh, kuldeep has written the answer as to get high e mobility no not that way i'll tell you in little more detail see we have already have something called sos silicon on sapphire sapphire means quartz or silicon on insulator insulator silicon dioxide itself is insulator pure silicon dioxide is insulator so we can construct the devices on top of a substrate that can be a complete insulator you will have to visualize that on a pizza base you will gradually put all the toppings cheese and you will have olives you will have capsicum you will have all other things right but below you have a pizza base 
Similarly, in a masala dosa below, you will have a masala dosa base. On top of it, they will apply masala, they will apply butter, butter masala, they will apply potato, palya, curry and all those things. But you have a base there below, right? Same way here, we need a base for constructing our devices. Now, the base can be an insulator because we want only the N, N MOSFET here, right? We want this N MOSFET. We want an N channel to be induced in between drain and source, right? We want to have N, N and N here. We want electrons only here. That is where we apply positive gate voltage to the gate. When we apply positive gate voltage, below it will induce electrons. That's all. It is electrostatic induction. So the lower level, this can be completely insulator also. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It should not be silicon. It should not be semiconductor. It can be complete insulator, just like a pizza base or a masala dosa base. But the point here is, uh, growing devices on top of an insulator is very expensive. The reason is, how do we dope this uh, substrate for n-type? We will have to pass arsenic. Or how do we do for p-type? We will have to pass boron. Let us say we have a pure silicon semiconductor substrate. Now the pure silicon has to be doped. You will have to pass arsenic gas on it. Then it will become n-type because arsenic is pentavalent. But if you have to make a p-type, you will have to pass boron on it. Then it will become p-type. Now selectively, you will have to mask on the top. At the top, you will have masks. Selectively, what you will do is, uh, you will apply different masks separately for arsenic, separately for boron, separately for oxidation. Because you need a gate oxide also here. That gate oxide is also called as thin oxide. Now in such a case, you will have multiple masks now. It is like a film photography. In a film photography, when we have special effects, all of you must have seen the film Indiran or Robo of Rajnikanth, or you already have seen fully the Rajamouli's movie Bahubali. You might not have seen Indiran, but I am very sure that all of you have watched the movie Bahubali. If any of you have not had watched the movie Bahubali, why are you still waiting? Okay, why are you still waiting? Fine. So, in all those movies, when they put all those special effects, it is not just a single process. All these special effects, they will be videographed, they will be processed, animations will be done in so many ways. And there are multiple masks which are clubbed there. In the same way, in the VLSI process also, there will be multiple masks. Separately for drain, sorry, separately for N, separately for P, separately for oxide, separately for metal. Now, when you have the source, gate, gate and drain, this drain is metal now, source is metal now, gain, again, gate is polysilicon. I will come back to that later on. I will not proceed further until I am sure that you have understood this structure. You got my point? Even if the lab gets delayed, even if I want to continue in the next uh, class also, I don't mind. Until I am convinced that all those who want to understand have understood it fully, I will not go to the next step at all. That is my method. Because unless you know whatever you are doing, there is no point in you doing anything. You should know whatever you are doing here. What are all these things? You should know. If you don't know, then there is no point in whatever you do in the lab. Because anyhow, in the lab, you switch on the computer, you do something, you click the mouse, you type in the keyboard. As per the lab manual, you can do on your own. You don't need any teachers because lab manual is anyhow there. I have shared it in the Google class also. You can just follow the lab manual steps. And this lab manual, 10 years before, I only had meticulously prepared. And gradually, my colleagues have been refining it and they have been updating it. That's all. So, every step I had meticulously put 10 years before itself. So, you just follow all those steps. You will get the output naturally. Output seen, result verified, exam passed. And in the YY, if you ask some two or three questions, you will get two or three marks. Anyhow, YY is only for five marks or ten marks. So it does not make much of a difference. But if you don't understand whatever you are doing, 
then can I call my students as engineers after two years? Or can I simply call them as keyboard players and mouse players? That is where the difference is. That is why until I am convinced that you have understood all these things, I am not going to go further. Now let me stop my self-appraisal. Let me continue the class. So the point, where was we? I, we can grow the device even on an insulator. But for growing the device on an insulator, it is very difficult because the insulator may not absorb boron or arsenic so easily. Visualize the periodic table and visualize the group 14 elements. Carbon, silicon, germanium, tin, lead. I will write it here. Carbon, silicon, germanium, tin, and lead. This is group 14 in the periodic table. So top you have carbon, then you have silicon, then you have germanium. We generally use silicon and germanium as our base material. Can someone tell me why are we not using carbon? Why are you not using silicon? Why are you not so uh, tin? Why are you not using lead? All are in the group 14, right? And all must be tetravalent only, right? Even carbon also, outermost electrons, four only, tin also, lead also, right? Then why are we using only silicon and germanium? Why are we not using carbon, tin, lead? Can anyone tell me? This is because their valence electron is not ready for electron pairing. Okay, partly. Uh, conduction is high. In which one? Starting elements might be conductive. Carbon is a conductor. Carbon is not a conductor. Carbon also is a semiconductor. Because what is carbon nanotube? C and T. Carbon nanotube. In the carbon nanotube, carbon itself is used as a switching element there. So carbon is not actually a very good conductor. Partly it is a conductor. It is not a very good conductor. It is not an insulator as well. But the excitation energies are varying, right? For silicon and germanium. Yeah, yeah. The, the excitation energy will be. That is also correct. And then uh, the electron structure, if we see that uh, SP shells and how they occupy. In yeah. silicon and germanium, the last electron is easily can be easily pulled off for bond formation. Whereas in carbon, uh, and lead kind of materials, it's difficult to do so, and we need more energy to do it. Is okay. It like yeah, you are trying from the energy band side, and silicon is cheaper, is what Kuldeep says. Why carbon is costly? Huh? <laughs> Compared to germanium, silicon is cheaper because silicon is part of sand. Silicon is extracted from silicon dioxide, silicon dioxide is sand, which is abundantly available. That way carbon is also abundantly available. We can make carbon also. We will burn anything that will become carbon, right? That way carbon is also cheaper. But there is a main reason. The main reason is silicon and germanium are of crystalline nature. Whereas carbon is amorphous form. Silicon, tin and lead are metallic form. Tin and lead are having very low melting point. You already know that we are using... For soldering, we are using tin and lead combination only. So they are in the metallic form. So this is ruled out. Using tin and lead is ruled out. Okay. Next, after tin and lead is ruled out, carbon is an amorphous material. Amorphous material means it is not so easy to grow devices using carbon. It is not so strong as such. What we want is, when we have this pizza base, we want the pizza base to be strong so that all the toppings will be withstand, the weight of the toppings will be withstood by the pizza base. Now, if we use carbon directly, carbon will not have that much of physical 
strength because it is not of crystalline nature. The same carbon can have an allotropy called diamond also. But that diamond is out of the nature's creation which is very expensive that way. The same carbon can have a form of graphite also. But the graphite is amorphous nature. So naturally we are left with these two choices. Silicon and germanium which are basically uh, crystalline in nature. That is the point. Now I will come back. It is not so easy to grow our devices on top of an insulating material like silicon dioxide. The reason is silicon dioxide will not easily absorb the dopants like boron or arsenic. Okay, why I wanted to tell boron or arsenic? Now can you list some of the uh, elements which are there in group 14 and then in group 15? Can you tell me? Just like I told you carbon, silicon, germanium, tin, lead. What are the neighbors of group 14 on the left side and right side? Anybody remembers? Nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic. Which side? Left side or right side? Right side. Right side. Nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic. Yeah. Arsenic, then we have antimony. Antimony, what is the symbol? I don't remember now. Antimony is there here. Bis Letter AD, AT, AT or ST, whatever, I don't remember now. And bismuth. Nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, bismuth. Okay, what about the left side? Antimony is SB. Yeah? Okay, let me write SB. Let me write SB. Okay, what about the left side? Boron. 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 Aluminium. Gallium. Indium. And thallium. Boron, aluminium, gallium, indium, thallium. Now you see, boron we use as a dopant, gallium we use as a dopant, and phosphorus we use as a dopant, arsenic we use as a dopant. You can see, whenever we want to have p-type, we pass boron gas, or we can use gallium also. And when we want to have n-type, we pass phosphorus also, or we pass arsenic also. We have these choices. Now, we will have so many electrochemical processes when we manufacture these semiconductors. And some of these dopants are highly toxic and dangerous. For example, arsenic is a highly toxic gas. Which means, when arsenic is being used as a doping material inside the foundry, there should not be any human being present there. Almost all these processes are being right now done only by robots because robots will not die by inhaling arsenic. Most of these processes are automated in the VLSI foundries. So that way arsenic is a highly toxic gas. It requires special processes to handle it. That is when the process can become expensive. So we have the choice of either using phosphorus or arsenic. We have the choice of either using boron or gallium. Now you can see that silicon and germanium are simple semiconductors. Whereas the combination of gallium and arsenic is also there. That is called compound semiconductor. All the light emitting diodes are manufactured using gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide phosphide, gallium indium phosphide. They are all compound semiconductors. We use silicon and germanium for manufacturing normal diodes and transistors. JFETs, MOSFETs, BJTs. But when we want light emitting diodes, we go for gallium arsenide, gallium indium arsenide, gallium indium phosphide, gallium indium phosphide arsenide, all such combinations. Because we want to have different colored LEDs, LEDs which can emit different colored lights. So this was your revision of the periodic table. That is why you have been taught periodic table in your schooling education and in PUC extensively. So that when you come to engineering, you will remember these things. I appreciate Vanilla that she made an effort of remembering all these things.
I appreciate Kuldeep that he keeps on putting some answers in the chat box. And I feel that other students are also listening to us or at least they are active. I feel so. Okay. Anyway, let me continue. Without students uh, interacting with me, I will not get prompted or inspired to talk further. Otherwise, I am talking only to the laptop now. Anyway, in our classes, when we don't have interaction with the students, I actually don't enjoy the teaching process at all. So that is why I expect all the interaction from your side. Then only I can talk a little more. And when I talk a little more, then you can have a little more benefit of learning. Otherwise, lab manual is there, textbooks are there, Google Azure is there for you, right? Let me come back here now with this particular diagram. As I've told you, until I am convinced that you have understood this diagram, I will not proceed further next. Now, why we don't want to have insulator at the bottom? Because of the problem that it cannot absorb all the dopants so easily. So we want one material at the bottom which can easily absorb the dopants. Now we have two choices. We can use a pure silicon semiconductor, exactly pure silicon semiconductor. But the pure silicon semiconductor will always have uh, both N type and P type. Right? Pure silicon semiconductor is neither N type and P type. So naturally, it is somewhere in the middle exactly that we don't want. Now we will dope this pure semiconductor into P type and we use it as our pizza base. You get it? This is the, our pizza base, the substrate. We purposefully make this substrate as P type if you want N MOSFET. The reason is if you have pure silicon, it will have both charge carriers, it will have both holes and electrons. There are both types there. Now we want to have a N MOSFET at the top. N MOSFET will have only electrons as the charge carriers. When we want to have electrons only as the charge carriers, below it must be the opposite type, it must be P type. The reason is it will never take part in conduction. The P type will not take part in conduction when we are using N type MOSFET, right? Because between N type source and N type drain, we will have an induction of electrons here, then the whole thing becomes N. When the whole thing becomes N, it is going to uh, carry electrons when we apply the drain voltage here. So, if at all we have a pure semiconductor, that pure semiconductor may also take part in conduction, which we don't want. And we cannot have an insulator below because that is an again expensive process. We want to have a cheaper device. So, the next choice is we simply make the substrate itself P-type by doping with the boron in the first place. Initially, we pass boron and we make the complete substrate P-type. Later on, we selectively pass arsenic here so that we get the source and drain. Now, because of this requirement, we have constructed a PN junction. We did not want to construct a PN junction. Right? Actually, we did not want to construct a PN junction. We wanted that the substrate should not be a conductive material when we have a device at the top. So naturally, when you have N MOSFET, below you should have P substrate. And when you have P MOSFET, below you should have N substrate. And whenever you have both, you will have one substrate, you will have one well. I hope in the theory class, this is all discussed already. You will have a substrate which is P type and you will have one well that is N type. On a P substrate, you will have N MOSFET and on a well, you will have a P MOSFET. Anyhow, we are going to see all that later on in our lab class also. One minute. Yeah. So you are telling in place the P substrate, we want to insulate again. Can you be a little louder? I am unable to hear you. So now is it audible? Yeah, it is audible. Uh, you told uh, in place of the P substrate, we need an insulator. Yeah. But if there is an insulator there, then uh, how will the electrons or holes move and a channel is formed? How is that possible with an insulator? Insulator will not take part in conduction at all. Insulator is like a foundation. Yeah, so if the whole thing is on... Yeah, but there is channel here. No, you can see the source and drain. In between them, there is a space, right? 
yeah so the so both the n types are fused into p substrate only yeah yeah in this case it is p substrate if at all we have insulator insulator is only a strong foundation insulator will not take part in conduction at all just like when we construct a house below we have a strong foundation on top of which we have living room bedroom kitchen and all that right okay so you you weren't talking about the body being insulator yeah 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 that is what i'm telling body can be insulator the bottom portion can be completely insulator but the point is the insulator if you have to have one more layer on the top when you have to construct devices on top insulator will not absorb the dopants at all it will not absorb boron and arsenic we should have multiple processes and the thing will become much more expensive that is why for having a cheaper device instead of an insulator we use a p type substrate otherwise even now we have devices that are made of silicon on sapphire or silicon on insulator we have those devices generally defense applications satellite applications they don't go for a p type substrate they go for a insulated substrate only because Why they so? want yeah they want the switch to be very effective at that time is it clear yes sir okay sir okay so now we have a p type substrate which will not we want that substrate should not conduct only n mosfet will conduct so when you apply a gate potential at the top anyhow in between this source and drain it will induce a channel right that is because of the electrostatic induction just like in a capacitor you apply a positive supply to one side of the capacitor inadvertently at the other plate there will be induction of electrons right that is called electrostatic induction in the same way as soon as you apply a gate voltage at the top there will be induction of electrons below that is how the channel is formed that transistor conducts but below the channel you have the substrate okay the substrate is p type now without intending to have a pn junction now we have a pn junction now we don't want this pn junction also to conduct so what we do we connect the body to the ground you you would remember the inverter circuit where the body is also connected to ground and the source is also connected to ground in in case of n mosfet later on i'm going to show that whereas in bjt you did not bother about the body right in bjt you only bothered about collector base and emitter but in mosfet we are also using the body why because the body is here p type in case of bjt the construction is something different i'll not discuss the construction of bjt here because it is more complicated than mosfet as far as the construction of bjt is concerned bjt is a junction transistor where there are multiple surfaces mosfet is a simpler construction when compared to bjt so in bjt we don't bother about the body at all we only bother about collector base and emitter but in mosfet we always have to have a body contact or a substrate contact because we don't want this p type to conduct in any other fashion so what we do is if there's a diode here this p type and n type if there's a diode here i cannot uh, clear the screen now because once i clear the screen even this diagram will go away if the diagram goes away again i have to redraw it that is why let all this left side be as it is now just look at this if this is p type and n type there there's a p n diode now if this is source you will connect the source to ground now if at all there are any static charges in the substrate the static charges may make this diode to conduct and there may be leakage current flowing through the substrate now that will be unnecessary wastage of power just to prevent that we connect this anode also to ground that's all we connect the substrate also to ground and we connect the source also to ground just to prevent leakage current okay let me see whether i can erase the other things there is an eraser here okay let me erase all this type this side let this diagram be here let me erase all this
Okay, other things let them be there. Let me choose the different color now. Let me choose blue color to be colorful. Okay. Oh, now let me come back to whatever I have highlighted here. Last question before I get into this 180 nanometer and 2 micrometer. Last question to you students. Now, topmost layer is metal. Source and drain are metal. Bottommost layer is substrate. In between, there is this diffusion. Diffusion is either N type or P type. Later on, we have this oxide. Afterwards, we have polysilicon. So, let me write it. At the topmost, it is metal. Below metal, next layer is polysilicon. Below polysilicon, next layer is oxide. Below oxide, next layer is diffusion. Below diffusion, next layer is substrate. In between, there can be well. Now, I am not telling well. Well, I will tell when I discuss the inverter circuit. Right now, I am discussing only one MOSFET. As I told you, there will be P substrate, there will be N MOSFET. If I want to have a P MOSFET, then substrate we have completely made it as P type. So, we should have one more well here, small region called well. That well has to be of N type now. On that N type, I can grow the P MOSFET. Because as I told you, the body of the MOSFET has to be of the reverse type. If I want N MOSFET, its body should be P type. If I want P MOSFET, its body should be N type. But we have made the substrate as completely P type now. So naturally, we should have one more small area, which we call it as well. On top of the well, we grow the P MOSFET. So the body of the P MOSFET is different and the body of N MOSFET is different now. So naturally, the body of the P MOSFET is connected to VDD and the body of the N MOSFET is connected to ground. This was already discussed in the last class by my colleague Deepak. He had written all these inverter diagram and he had shown it. Okay. So that is where this well is. So remember this always. Bottom most is substrate. Next you have well. Next you have diffusion. Next you have oxide. Next you have polysilicon. Next you have metal. You will have to remember this upside down or downside up. You will have to visualize this. There are so many layers in a VLSI process. Not just this. There can be metal 1, metal 2, metal 3, metal 4, metal 5, metal 6. It can go on like that. There can be multiple metal layers. Now visualize Bangalore city. In the Bangalore city, we have underpass, we have main road, we have uh, flyover, right? And at some places we have flyover over flyover, right? And at some places we have flyover over that we have a train road separately, bus route separately. We have so many such constructions, right? Why would we have all these such constructions? Flyover over flyover, underpass. In future we may have one more underpass below one more underpass. We have already these metro trains tunnels where we have underpass and over bridge. Why these many connections? Because we have a limited space and we want people to move. In a limited space, when we want people to move, we should have multiple paths which are provided so that there can be connections between different places. In the same way, in the case of VLSI, we want to pack millions of transistors into a small area. Just visualize your own thumb drive or pen drive. Now the pen drive's capacity is 4 GB, 8 GB, 16 GB. In a small space, in a thumb drive, in a pen drive, if you open it, you will see a small chip which is hardly 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter in size, hardly 10 mm by 10 mm. Sometimes even it is less than that. In such a small space, if you have a 16 GB flash drive, flash memory, what does it mean? 16 into 10 power 9 into 8. Entire 128 into 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 128 followed by so many zeros, 9 zeros. That is 128 uh, gigabits of memory, right? 16 gigabyte means it is 128 gigabits. Each bit is now one memory element, right? Each bit is one, one storage element. It is actually a MOSFET there. It has to store 0 or it has to store 1 because MOSFET is having a gate outside there. Now think about 128 gigabits of 
memory cells or MOSFETs inside one 10 mm by 10 mm silicon chip. Now visualize all that. Now I'll tell you a proverb. Yatha Brahmandha, Tatha Pindandha. Just like the macrocosm, so is the microcosm. Just like the macrocosm of the universe is infinite and having millions of stars or billions of stars, the same way the human body is having millions of cells, trillions of neurons. Yatha Brahmandha, Tatha Pindandha. Just like the God packed so many stars and planets in the universe, he packed so many living cells inside the human body also. Both are wonderful. Universe is also wonderful and mysterious. Human body is also mysterious and wonderful. Now coming to technology, even VLSI is also wonderful. Yatha Brahmandaha, Tatha Pindandaha, Yatha Silicon Chippaha. Okay. <laughs> that is my Englishized Sanskrit version. Silicon chip is also wonderful. VLSI process is also wonderful. In a small 10 mm by 10 mm chip, we are packing millions of transistors. Electronics is wonderful. Whatever mechanical engineers do, that is visible. Whatever computer science engineers do, that is visible. Whatever automobile engineers do, that is visible. Whatever civil engineers do, that is visible. Whatever chemical engineers do, electrical engineers do, all that is visible. Whatever electronics engineers do, that is not at all visible. One MOSFET cannot be visible because it is of the size of 180 nanometer, 2 micrometer. How a micrometer nanometer is visible? You will have to use a microscope for a micrometer. You will have to use a nanoscope for a nanometer. Still, we are able to manufacture and it is working. Thumb drive is working. Laptop is working. Desktop computer is working. Mobile phone is working. Everything is working. Electronics is wonderful. Electronics engineers are wonderful people. Do you agree? Nobody agrees with me. Huh? <laughs> you may think Arvinda sir is a funny fellow, Arvinda sir is a mad fellow. I don't know. I don't know whether I'm a funny fellow or a mad fellow. I'm just being a sincere teacher here. Except for Kuldeep, no one else agrees. Huh? <laughs> anyway, then I think you and me are not compatible. I'm compatible only with Kuldeep then. What about vanilla? Are we wonderful people, electronics people? Yes, sir. Ah, at least if you agree, I am prompted to continue the class. Anyhow, all other students are totally silent. They must be watching the fun, no? Anyway, if you understand the class, that is my purpose. That is purpose served. I told you in the beginning, until I am convinced that you have understood this concept, I will not proceed further. Okay. So now think about this. Think about what? At the top part, you have metal, right? Why I told you there can be metal 1, metal 2, metal 3, metal 4, metal 5, metal 6. There can be up to 12 metal processors nowadays. The reason is, just like we have underpass, overpass, over bridge, flyover, we have main road. We have all these connections within the city. Same way when you have 128 uh, gigabits of transistors inside a small thumb drive. How to connect all of them? For connecting all of them, one metal is not sufficient. We must have multiple metal lines. That is when we can have M1, M2, M3, M4 like that. That is when the chip becomes more and more complicated and costly. Anyway, let me not bore you further by telling unnecessary details. The point is, come back to the transistor, come back to the inverter. That is our primary goal here. So, top part you have metal, then you have polysilicon, then you have oxide, then you have diffusion, then you have well, then you have substrate. My question is here. 
that after this question is answered, then I am coming to this, these points. I am coming to this length and width. So my question is here. What for is this polysilicon? Can somebody answer me? Why the gate material has to be polysilicon? That is my question. Because we do not want it to mix with the body and we just want to separate it. But we have source as a metal, we have drain as a metal, we can have a gate also as a metal, right? We take the source connection outside from the chip as a metal. We take the drain connection outside the chip as a metal. Even inside the chip also source and drain are metals only. Gate yeah, also can be metal, if right? I put metal and gate, then I'm connecting the source and drain, right? We will be connecting gate also, right? Gate also will be connected to another input or uh, from some other gate input will come to this gate, right? Yes, sir. But if I hmm. take the gate as the metal, then... Hmm. Source and drain are kind of shorted, like no, they are connected to their itself. No, we can have multiple metal layers, right? We can have wires. That will be expensive, class, no, sir. No, in the theory class, whether stick diagrams, some diagrams are discussed or not, I don't know. But when you have stick diagrams, wires. you can have multiple layers of metal, metal 1, metal 2, metal 3. You can have multiple layers of metal, which each one of them are insulated. Just like you have flyover over flyover. Each one of them will be separate. Same way. That will be more expensive. Anyhow, it is expensive. Multiple metal layers are always expensive. The Kuldeep said to prevent parasitic capacitance. Not exactly. Not exactly for parasitic capacitance. Between drain and gate. No, not exactly. Even with the polysilicon also, you will have parasitic capacitance. That is not the exact reason. I will give you a clue. The clue is, there is no gate current in case of MOSFET. Unlike BJT. In BJT, you have base current and you have beta. In MOSFET, you have no gate current. That is the clue. Now, can you tell me the answer? Okay, the answer is, as there is no gate current in case of MOSFET, the gate material need not be a conductor. That's all. The gate material need not be a conductor to prevent the charge to get into the channel. No, 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 not that. The answer is really very simple here. Don't get confused. Two, actually the MOSFET will not have any, will not need any gate current, right? It is a field effect transistor. It is a voltage control device. So only the voltage should reach to the gate. There is no need of any current. When there is no need of any current, the gate material need not be a conductor at all. That is the point. When the gate material need not be a conductor, then the polysilicon can be used as a gate material. Polysilicon basically means it is a polycrystalline silicon, which is not a very good conductor. But it is not an insulator also. As silicon is not an insulator, right? It's a semiconductor. Now this polycrystalline silicon is a doped silicon, which is again a conductor, but it is not as good a conductor as a metal. Source and drain have to be metal. Why? Because drain can be connected to VDD. Source can be connected to ground. Ground has to be a metal wire only. It has to be a very good conductor. VDD or power supply has to be a metal only. Because the power supply is connected there. All the power supply wires and ground wires, those wires have to be conductors only. But the gate material need not be conductor. Why? Because there is no gate current. That is the reason. When there is no need of gate current, why should we use a metallization process for the gate material? Not required. We can use the same silicon material only. We can dope the silicon to become somewhat good conductor. 
So polysilicon is not a very good conductor, but it is not a very bad conductor also. For example, if a metal is having about, uh, uh, let us say, 0.1 ohm resistivity, then the polysilicon will be having around 20 ohms resistivity. But even with the 20 ohms resistivity, current will not flow, but it is the voltage which can move there, right? Voltage, voltage can reach to the gate because it is still a conductor. As there is no current there, there is no voltage drop at the polysilicon wire. That is the main reason why the gate material is called as polysilicon. Now, because of this polysilicon, this process is called as self-aligned process. Because below polysilicon, you have gate oxide. That gate oxide is insulator. And below gate oxide, you will have an induction of the channel. Now, the polysilicon mask and the gate oxide mask can be one and the same. You need not have two masks now separately for oxide and polysilicon. On top of oxide, you will have polysilicon. So that way, this is called as a self-aligned process. I hope my lab class became a theory class only. But it doesn't matter. I want all the doubts to be clarified from the student's side. Only then I will have a satisfaction of conducting the class. That's why I am going much deeper. Otherwise, some of you may comment that instead of the lab class, he is conducting a theory class. It is up to you. Anyhow, this lab class is for three hours, right? I'm going to end it in the next, uh, next uh, maybe within next 10-15 minutes, I'm going to end this. Don't worry. Some of you may be already getting bored, but the lab class is for three hours. So I'm doing my job. Fine. I hope now the point is clear that why polysilicon is there. Any more questions, Vanilla? Or any more questions, Kuldeep? Only these you two are active. No, sir. Okay. Now my final discussion. What is this 180 nanometer? What is this 2 micrometer? That is my final discussion. That is why I told such a big story. Now, I'll tell you this 180 nanometer is the gap between source and drain. Let me annotate now. This is now L. And this is now P, W. Okay. The distance between source and drain is called channel length. Yes, it is called channel length. And that channel length because channel is induced across source and drain. But you have to visualize the three-dimensional channel. Okay. It is not just a two-dimensional channel. The device is a three-dimensional device. So there is channel all the way till here. There is channel all the way till here. Okay. So there is a distance between source and drain. In between them, the channel is induced. That is called L. Now what is this W? W is right from here till there. Right from here till there, there is W. Now in general, in general, if at all you have a table at home, which one is called as length, which one is called as width? Can anybody tell me? When you have a table at home, which one is called as length and which one is called as width? I will have to connect the charger to the laptop. It is, battery is going down. Can anybody tell me which one is called as the length, which one is called as the width? You are thinking my question may be stupid. The lengthier one is called as the length and the shorter one is called as the width, right? Larger side is length, correct? Larger side is length, smaller side is width, right? But now look at this MOSFET. Look at this MOSFET. The larger one is width, smaller one is length. Is it fine? Someone has to answer now. 
here the larger one is width smaller one is length is it fine oh yes <laughs> fine so what should we do <laughs> what should we do the point is this is called channel length that 180 nanometer is the gap between source and drain that is called channel length whereas this 2 micrometer is called channel width okay in this way width is larger than the length here but i will tell you there is a justice for this the justice is whatever is that w that is the polysilicon's length whatever is the l that is the polysilicon width am i right let me use a different color and let me write this polysilicon see this this polysilicon all the way there is this polysilicon on top of the channel there is this polysilicon layer that polysilicon layer the length of the polysilicon is named as w here the width of the polysilicon is named as l here i hope now it is clear so now we should say that the length of the polysilicon is the channel width and the width of the polysilicon is the channel length am i right The length of the polysilicon is the channel width and the width of the polysilicon is the channel length. That is how you have to remember. Otherwise, this can be confusing. So, I will repeat. Channel length is polysilicon width. Channel width is polysilicon length. As far as the polysilicon is concerned, the lengthier one is length, the shorter one is width. The same thing is reverse when we uh, connect it to the channel. Now, you can see these dimensions. Now, let me stop annotating. Let me clear the screen. Now, you can see the length is 180 nanometer, width is 2 micrometer. Otherwise, anybody will ask why the width is larger, why the length is smaller. Now, the answer is this width is actually the polysilicon length. Length is actually polysilicon width. And as far as the channel is concerned, they are reverse. So, you will have to always visualize a three dimensional MOSFET structure where the width is always in micrometer. Width cannot be in nanometer. This total width cannot be in nanometer. Whatever you are seeing on the screen is a default dimension of this particular cell, the particular PMOS cell. It is the default dimension. As soon as you pick up this instance in the cadence tool, you are going to get by default 180 nanometer. You cannot reduce this further. But if you want, you can increase this. You can make it as 360 nanometer. You can make it as 1 micrometer also. You can make it as 50 micrometer also. But you cannot make it less than 180 nanometer because 180 nanometer is the least dimension in this particular library. Now, for that 180 nanometer, 2 micrometer is the minimum width. There is something called aspect ratio, width to length ratio. Now, as far as this GPDK 180 is concerned, the width cannot be reduced below 2 micrometer. Even if you try to edit these characteristics or these dimensions in the lab, the tool will not accept it. But if you can increase you can increase instead of 2 micrometer you can make it 4 micrometer you can make it 8 micrometer that is possible but going below 2 micrometer is not possible the reason is something technical okay maybe at the end of the semester if you people remember this question you ask me this question once again or you answer this question once again why the width cannot be in nanometer that is the question only the channel length is nanometer Width is not nanometer. You have to visualize that three-dimensional structure where it is a polysilicon length that is called channel width. Now here width is larger than length as far as the channel is concerned. 
and the width cannot be in nanometer it has to be in micrometer only why is the question for which today i will not give the answer because you will have to learn the theory course also equally well and you will have to think about all these questions by the end of the semester if any of you remember this question you give me the answer or you ask me the answer at that time i'll tell you not now so let me proceed now it is now 9:40 i think i'll conclude in the next 5 uh, or 10 minutes so when you press i up, oh from there it started all this when you press i that is for instance and when that instance comes this is the default screen coming and for this particular experiment you are not going to gain change in any of these dimensions okay for the inverter experiment you are going to use this default dimensions later on for amplifier experiments we are going to tell you to change the dimensions i will tell about w l ratio there but if fortunately from next month onwards if the offline class has start then our life and your life will be far easier all the discussions can happen here in the lab itself in front of the system itself and that is much better because along with hands on we can work together otherwise uh, i don't know this is going to become slightly tougher for you also now see when you press that i when you click that pmos and when you select this device you will get this device now you can see here the default dimensions are 2 micrometer width and 180 nanometer length that multiplier is 1 and the instance name is pmos 1 and its present name is pm0 now you can have multiple copies of the same pmos anywhere just like control c and control v here also you can simply place all these instances again and again that is possible just like uh, in all other uh, softwares you are going to use control c control v copy and paste here in cadence also that is possible that way but it is not actually control c and control v it is using different commands or using the mouse itself so now press i get pmos place this here you can see that it has got four terminals now gate and can you tell me which one is source and which one is drain here can anyone tell me in the symbol which one is source and which one is drain upper one is source why because of the arrow mark but in case of mosfets source and drain are interchangeable no in case of mosfets source and drain are physically same isn't it in case of bjt collector and emitter are not physically same collector is larger emitter is smaller than collector and emitter is heavily doped collector is medium doped but in case of mosfet drain and source are physically one and the same then why should you differentiate for a pmos source has to be given to a high voltage yeah source has to be given to vdd not high voltage to the power supply yeah source has to be given to power supply upper one is vdd that is fine but if i reverse it will it not work if i connect this up and this down will it not work as source and drain are interchangeable will it work or not it will work correct if source and drain are interchangeable even if you connect the source to the drain drain to the source it will work then why are we putting this arrow mark if it is working why are we putting this arrow mark current flows from source to drain <laughs> okay <laughs> fine <laughs> yeah current flows from source to drain body should be connected huh? no body we can always connect to vdd right body is in the middle body we can always connect to vdd it has nothing to do with the source and drain source and drain are physically one and the same 
current will flow from source to drain that is also correct but it is we who define which one is source and which one is drain otherwise both are one and the same you can remember when you write a nand gate or a nor gate you will not indicate which is source which is drain when you write a digital symbol of a mosfet you will not indicate the arrow mark there why because they are interchangeable only when you write analog circuitry that arrow mark will come into picture you will have two symbols for a mosfet you have been using this symbol only right normally in all the cmos circuitry you have been using this symbol now we have a symbol like this i am writing n mosfet now i am writing n mosfet now you have a symbol like this this is for n mosfet or p mosfet you had a symbol like this if at all you have a p mos you will have a bubble here right and along with the bubble you have been writing the symbol now you have a p mosfet and you will write a symbol like this now in a p mosfet you will not use a bubble at the gate you don't have a bubble because you have a arrow mark here so in the digital circuitry we will use the symbol that is at the left side whatever is visible and in the analog circuitry we use the symbol that is right side that way for the same mosfet we will have two symbols one in digital design one in analog design in the digital design we are not much worried about source and drain because they are interchangeable in the analog design we are little bit worried because later on we are going to connect it like this we are going to connect the source to ground in n mosfet body to ground you remember that p and n same in case of p mosfet we are going to connect the source to vdd and we are going to connect the body to vdd why this is again p and n p mosfet is inside a n well n mosfet is inside a p substrate so that is where we connect them for this connections we should distinctly know which one is source and which one is drain that is why we have these symbols otherwise source and drain are interchangeable i'll repeat once again it is we who decide which one is source and which one is drain when we make connections until we make connections source and drain are interchangeable as such ultimately it is we who decide so in the tool he specifically gives this symbol as source so that it will be placed in this manner only because cadence already knows that p mos the source has to be connected to vdd and in n mos source has to be connected to ground now using this p mosfet later on we take one more n mosfet you see here we press i once again and we take one more n mosfet now this is this n mosfet okay later on we can connect them together by pressing w when you press w that is for wire i is for instance w is for wire now using a wire just like in p spice you can connect all of them it is connected here let me zoom now you can see it's all connected here you can see the body of p mosfet is connected to source and the body of n mosfet is also connected to its source because the body of p mosfet is n uh, uh, n well body of n mosfet is p sub p sub is connected to n channels source n well is connected to p channel source and drain and drain are connected together and gate and gate are connected together this becomes input this becomes output later on press p for pin when you press p for pin you can place pins here now there is one more menu coming here it will ask you whether it is a input pin or output pin you can give the name accordingly for the input side it is input pin for the output side it is output pin you can give the name accordingly then you can place those pins once you place those pins see here it is input pin placed similarly there is output pin placed and later on again you can place vdd and ground by pressing i you can select vdd and ground not from the gpdk 180 library there is one more library called analog lib 
from the analog lib you can select vdd and ground then you can click on check and save when you check and save if there are any schematic errors the tool will show you otherwise your inverter is going to be saved now look at this this is the inverter which you are going to construct in your first lab now the next question the last question i will be ending this now because i will discuss this uh, simulation and layout in the next class let me take my own time for you to digest all these things now my colleague uh, deepak has already created an assignment in the google class what you people have to do is each lab has three marks now one mark for your attendance one mark for your observation book one more for your record book now we can relax the record book as of now but we cannot uh, ignore the observation book so you will have to keep one 100 page notebook as such as an observation book for this lab whatever is discussed today you write it in the observation book maybe small one page or two page whatever you remember you recall you write it in the observation book you scan it and and you submit it in that assignment in the google class we will be later on doing uh, internal evaluation for that because this is all part of cie okay now this is the record do you mean you have to write the observation book and submit yeah observation book you keep on writing for each lab session and whatever you wrote you scan it and make it as a pdf and upload into the google class that is enough as far as record is concerned we will not ask you to write a record now because you have not had conducted the experiment at all so we cannot ask you to uh, write the record but observation okay, so book we just yeah we just have to submit the observation book that's correct, it correct correct okay sir okay now the last point i think it is nearing to 10 o'clock now by 10 o'clock i will conclude this class now the last point the inverter is now connected pins are connected this is one pin this is one pin in the next class i will tell you how to construct a symbol for this and using the symbol how to construct a test circuit and how to simulate let me keep it for the next class only now you know that the upper one is source here lower one here in mosfet is source here the last question as far as your understanding of the uh, device and the inverters are concerned one of you or two of you or all of you have to answer this question to me either in the chat box or you will have to unmute and answer you tell me why source is called source why drain is called drain I don't know if it is correct, so but I can give it a try. Yeah, tell me. Uh, source is called source because electrons move from source to drain, meaning they start at source and they go to drain. So, basic English terminology. Okay, that is that is that is fine. That is in N MOSFET. What about in P MOSFET? What about in P MOSFET? the same thing with holes sir same thing with holes correct which means source is sourcing charge carriers right whether electrons or holes drain is draining out charge carriers just like in a wash basin there's a tap the tap is sourcing water and the basin below is draining water in the same way source is sourcing charge carriers that means that the upper side you can see we have the source which is p mosfet connected to vdd now in case of p mosfet the charge carriers are holes so naturally the upper terminal is now sourcing charge carriers which are holes that is why upper one is called as source lower one is called as drain similarly below when you write it the upper one is called as drain lower one is called as source why n mosfet is sourcing electrons now here the charge carriers are electrons so the arrow mark indicates what 
the arrow mark indicates the flow of conventional current in case of p mosfet the flow of holes and the flow of current are one and the same because holes are positive charge carriers whereas in case of n mosfet electrons go in the reverse direction conventional current is measured in the forward direction this way that is why this arrow mark indicates the flow of current in case of p mos current flows into the source whereas in case of n mos current flows out of the source in other words in case of n mosfet electrons move from source to drain whereas in case of p mosfet holes move from source to drain that is why always a drain and drain are connected together and the source is connected to vdd and source is connected to ground again remember even though source and drain are interchangeable it is we who define something as source and drain based on our connections otherwise physically they are one and the same this you have to remember because when you make a layout for this particular circuit you are going to manually draw the layout for the circuit when you manually draw the layout for the circuit there is something called lvs layout versus schematic if you make any error when you manually draw the layout the tool will give lvs error if at all you interchange drain and source there you should be very clear about which one you calling it a source which one you call it a drain you have to automatically connect source to the body here here also source to the body or body to the source if you make any errors here or if you make any errors in the drain to drain connection tool will give that lvs error that is why these are all important basic things finally let me conclude the class if there are any more questions you can ask me otherwise i will end the class now okay sir is this software open source no this is not open source because it is a one crore worth <laughs> software you cannot use it at home at all you will have to use it in the lab only if at all you cannot install you cannot install it is not it is not available as a pirated version also easily there are people who are using it <laughs> i will not tell it okay i am not supposed to tell it because we have signed a contract with the cadence that we will be using the tool in our college for only education purpose so we have a subsidized version for industry people it costs around 1 crore for the colleges they are giving it at uh, almost 10 lakhs that is because university told the cadence people that you should provide it to the colleges in a subsidized price but we have signed a contract that we will use it only for education purpose not for manufacturing purpose that way you cannot use it otherwise okay you cannot download it from any uh, other website also as such because the pirated version of this eda software is completely illegal okay so that is the reason i am telling all these things in detail because we know that you cannot work at home at all you will have to work in the college only you have no other option xilinx you can use at home matlab you can use at home c++ c language you can use at home microwind you can use at home tanner you can use at home if at all you want to work on vlsi now you can download a freeware software called microwind that is available and student version tanner software if it is available that you can download but not cadence cadence student version is not available but if there are resources available you can visit cadence.com and you can find out if there are student resources available all that you can use but not the software okay sir thank you okay okay let me end the class for today see you in the next lab class until then take care and goodbye so okay thank you sir